A gracious good day to one and all once again. Tis I, Norton the First, by grace of God, Emperor of the United States, and Protector of Mexico, back with you once again for episode 91 of Emperor Norton's Fantastic History Vlog. Today is July 9, 2020. It is our 104th day, 114th day under COVID-19 restrictions. We are coming to you today from the lovely Imperial Gardens. It's uh, not too much wind this morning, a couple dogs yapping in the background, sorry about that. And today's selection from the Imperial Bonsai Collection is the Stone Pine. This one's especially nice, I think. Yes, very proud of that. Well, let's get start, rather, with our national days. Uh, don't put all your eggs in one omelet day. I'd make a big omelet. We got about two dozen in the uh, Imperial Larder this morning. National Sugar Cookie Day. Mmm, that sounds good. And Call of the Horizon Day. It's about getting out and traveling and having adventures and things like that. We're not doing too much of that right now. But maybe in the future we'll be able to once again. Our newest segment, Florida Man. Of course the wind comes up for that. Well, today in Florida Man, Florida Man chants as police try to arrest him. It was not reported what he was chanting. Let's get on with our San Francisco item today. And as we always do, we rely on John Walston's wonderful book, This Date in San Francisco, because it's on this date in 1846, the Captain John Montgomery claims Yerba Buena for the United States, one of the most important days in San Francisco history. And so for this one, we will read the description of a petty officer of the Portsmouth, the ship that John Montgomery sailed in on, uh, who signed himself simply as filings. Oh dear, the wind has come up. If we don't do this vlog early, the wind gets fierce here. We wouldn't be able to tape out here at all. So hopefully there's not too much wind noise. We have a windscreen on this microphone. Good. Anyway, here's what he wrote. The morning of the 9th of July broke bright and beautiful, and long before the sun rose, the crew of the Portsmouth were roused from their hammocks, and contrary to the usual custom, the decks were left to their own fate for far more important affairs. Breakfast was served at 6 a.m., and the word passed for all hands to appear in white frocks, blue pants, black hats, and shoes, and prepare for muster. Precisely at eight, the drum beat to quarters and the captain made a speech, which conveyed to us the idea that he, in obedience to orders of the Commodore, should hoist the stars and stripes in the public square that day and take possession of, in name, of the United States of America. Of course, we know that today is Portsmouth Square, but uh, it was simply the town square then. As soon as the retreat was beaten, the boats were ordered alongside and the Marines and Carboneers filed into them. We were landed in what is now Clark's Point, and when we all were on shore, formed in sec into sections, and to the soul-inspiring tune of Yankee Doodle from our band, trudged proudly up through Montgomery Street to Clay, up Clay to the plaza, and formed a hollow square. Here we rested our arms while the aides of the commander-in-chief disseminated themselves through the town and gathered together some 30 or 40 persons of all nations, colors, and languages, and having penned them in the square, formed by the soldier sailors, the captain putting on all his peculiar dignity, odd choice of words, walked up to the flagstaff and gave a majestic, majestic nod to his second command. The first lieutenant gave a similar nod to one of our quartermasters who came forward, flag in hand, and bent it on the halyards. Captain Montgomery had a proclamation ready prepared, and our first lieutenant now read it to the assembled crowd, and when he finished, gave the signal, and in, that, in a moment, amid a roar of cannon from the ship, the hurrahs of the ship's company, the vivas of the Californians, and the cheers of the Dutchmen, the barking of dogs, now they're not barking, and the braying of jackasses, that a, and a general confusion of sounds from every living thing within hearing, the flag floated up, which was never yet lowered to mortal foe. And on this day, Yerba Buena then, San Francisco now, became part of the United States of America. Happy 
birthday, San Francisco. We celebrate a few of them here, though. Uh, let's get on to our other stories for today. 1853, Commodore Matthew Perry and four U.S. Navy vessels visit Japan to force them to open up to American trade and end their policy of isolation. 1872, the donut cutter patents were granted to John Blondell, Thomaston, and Thomaston, Maine. Or in Thomaston, Maine, I think is what that is. 1900, the Commonwealth of Australia is established by the British House of Commons. Congratulations, Australia. 1934, SS Reichsfuhrer Heinrich Himmler takes command of German concentration camps. 1947, was the, uh, on this date, is the engagement of Brit Britain's Princess Elizabeth and Lieutenant Philip Mountbatten. Of course, that's now Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. Both of whom were in their 90s at this point. 1955, Bill Haley and the Comets rock around the clock. Tops the Billboard's chart, one of the best-selling singles ever. 1956 was Dick Clark's first appearance as host of American Bandstand. It's got a good beat, and I can dance to it. 1962, I had to dig a little lower on this one, a little deeper, rather. Andy Warhol's first West Coast Gallery exhibition at the Ferris Gallery of Los Angeles. The owner of the gallery, gallery bought all 32 canvases for $1,000. And it wasn't until 1996 that he finally relinquished the paintings to the Museum of Modern Art for $15 million. Wow. Burst today, 1819, Elias Howe, American inventor of the sewing machine. 1932, former Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. 1935, Argentinian singer Mercedes Sosa. 1937, artist David Hockney. 1938, actor Brian Dennehy. 1945, American sci-fi author Dean Kuntz. 1947, O.J. Simpson, born right here in San Francisco, went to Galileo High School. 1956, Tom Hanks, actor, born in Concord, California. 1964, singer, actor, uh, widow of Kurt Cobain, Courtney Love, also born in San Francisco. And 1976, Wonder Years actor, Fred Savage. Uh, deaths, 19, uh, sorry, 1850, Zachary Taylor, 12th President of the United States, dies in the White House at the age of 65. Not the first, but one of two presidents to die in the White House. The other being uh, President William Henry Harrison on April 4th, 1841. 1932, King C. Gillette, inventor of inexpensive and disposable razor blades. Uh, King, what an odd first name. Hmm. 1974, Earl Warren, Governor of California and 14th U.S. Supreme Court Chief Justice. 1996, famous San Francisco lawyer Melvin Belli. He was the first real celebrity lawyer. I think we've talked about him before. Had a rather interesting office on Montgomery Street in the Jackson Square Historic District, the uh, Barbary Coast area. Uh, was also featured on an episode of Star Trek. Uh, 2002, actor Rod Steiger. 2004, Isabel Sanford. Wheezy from the Jeffersons. Oh, George. And 2019, actor Rick Torn. Well, that wraps it up for today's edition. Until we see you again, stay safe, stay inside. But if you do go outside, wear a mask, please. It's, it's not a constitutional thing. It's just a matter of public safety. Don't take unproven cures. Saw a story yesterday about some church that was selling bleach to its parishioners to take internally. Not a good idea. Be kind to one another. Oh, and we have a very special episode planned for tomorrow. I don't want to give away what it's about. It's a surprise, but tomorrow's a very significant day. And then Saturday, we're doing a little something different uh, with the Countess Lola Montez. Well, Every Saturday, we always do something different with the Countess Lola Montez, but this is something really different. So uh, tune in for that. Tune in for everything. Until we see you again, a gracious.